Thanks for tuning in to your day off podcast, hosted by your boys, Corey and Tony. I think by the end of today, I might have another best friend. They're committed to making you fall in love with the hair industry, one podcast at a time. Uh, you're going to grab a lot of information. Yeah, you're going to learn a lot. Presented by Hair Industry. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. Your day off podcast will begin after a word from our sponsors. My name is Corey, and of course, I'm sitting with my best friend, Tony. What's up, buddy? What's happening, brother? We are live in Old Town, Alexandria, Virginia. Yes, sir. It's been a, it's been a minute since I've been down here. I haven't been here in years, man. I think since uh, since school. I think you're right. You know, we were talking when we were driving down here. We're like, oh, yeah, we used to live there, 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 and there, and then uh, now we're here. Yeah. Well, things haven't really changed too much down here. No, that's why they call it Old Town, I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> things are exactly the same. Right. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, dude, I'm super excited about today, um, about our guest today. Uh, a funny story is I was like, my daughter was watching TV, and I walked through the living room, and up on the screen is our today's guest, and, and, and I go, oh, I know that guy. And, of course, my daughter's like, you think you know everyone dad and i go no no seriously i know that guy you know so uh so i'm i'm excited to get in man yeah and and it's it's been it's been a minute since uh since we saw his face live yep uh but he hasn't changed at all not at all matter of fact somehow after 30 years he's just looking younger and younger and younger definitely uh yeah i, I want to know his magic i want to know his secret because the same's not happening for me no no me either <laughs> i can barely move in the morning these right. days you know oh my god it's crazy so uh today our guest is monty durham um if you don't know monty monty was the host of say yes to the dress atlanta um like i said we're pretty excited to have him i don't even know how from that moment on, I was like, how is Monty on there as a clothes stylist and not a hairstylist? Because we actually went to hair school with uh, with Monty. Yeah, that's I, we've had this conversation quite a bit that, you know, like the, the people that I think the, the year or two that we were there, there's so many successful, so many people that came out of there that are kind of like uh, doing a little bit of magic in the industry. Yeah. And uh, but he's definitely uh, uh, doing some magic. You know, what's interesting now that you bring that up is that. You know, when you're in hair school, and this is any hair school, they're, they're all, you know, you hear a lot that like only like 5% of you guys are going to be here in five years or 50% of you, whatever that statistic is, you know, like 50% in five years. But, 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 you know, it's interesting because like, like you said, those two years, like there's been so many great success stories that have come out of that, out of that salon. Well, maybe they got that, that statistic that wrong time. because Monty didn't think we were still hairdressers. He was looking at <laughs> you guys. He didn't even, I don't think he even thought we graduated school. Well, I mean, I, I and yeah, fair enough, you know, <laughs> but we get that a lot. Yeah, I mean, but if you look at him and you look at us, you'll see why. Oh, <laughs> completely. When you're watching this on Spotify, you, you'll understand. <laughs> you'll understand it. Exactly. Remember when, uh, remember when we went to see Robert Cromines and he was like, oh, the construction workers are here. It just, it's still, it still it makes me laugh. Man. Oh my gosh, that's how so can, true. How can we be more anti hairdresser? <laughs> right, <laughs> it's so crazy. Uh, After thirty years, we're still anti hairdresser. That's ridiculous. But yeah, thank you, clients, for uh, <laughs> just putting up with the way we look. I guess I know it's so crazy. So uh, real quick, I want to give you what. Uh, and I actually talked to Monty a couple weeks ago on the phone. I kind of like here's what I remember from hair school because it's been thirty years. We haven't seen each other in thirty years. I think it's been 30 years, something we're in that, we're in that range, right? Heck yeah. So, uh, so here's what I'm 92. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We're, oh, golly, you're old. Um, but, but here's, here's just a couple key points of what I remember from Monty in school. And then I kind of want to get into it. Uh, first and foremost, it was the first like same sex marriage that, that I ever heard anyone talk about. And Monty got married, um, in like 91 or 92, he got married at the Hay Adams hotel, which is like this super fancy hotel in downtown DC. Please look it up. Um, a. B, at his wedding, he invited Jackie Onassis to attend. And I remember being in school and him getting a rejection letter or an RSVP no that she wasn't going to make it. But it was also <laughs> but it was also like his prized possession. Because uh, another little known fact about Monty is that I don't know how little known it is, but Monty's absolutely obsessed with, with Jackie Kennedy Onassis 
and he has quite the uh, quite the Jackie Onassis memorabilia collection, which he uh, he he proudly donated a few weeks ago. I kind of want to get into that conversation. Um, and uh, I don't know, is that it? Oh yeah, and, and also like all of his clients uh, walked out of the salon looking like uh, Jackie Onassis. Those are those are the uh, those, those are the ca- kind of key points that I remember uh, about Monty. What I remember about Monty, I remember like every other student looked like a a deer in headlights except. Monty. Monty walked around like, I thought he was the owner of the school. The oh, way he no, was no, no, that's around. so fair. Yeah. I mean, he was so poised, calm, that long hair. Like, you know, he was just so flamboyant. It was just like, I said, like, oh, he has to be something. You know what I mean? But he was a student. And, and put together. Oh. And put together. Totally. Totally. Should we get in? Yeah, let's do it. Mr. Monty Durham, welcome to your day off, buddy. Wow. I mean, God. Somehow, I don't remember school quite like you're remembering it, but okay. Well you, well, you didn't see it from our perspective. Well, no, but sitting across the table from you and now looking and talking about me being the best dress, I mean, <laughs> that's a no-brainer. <laughs> Shit, that's a no-brainer. Fair enough, man. Mm-hmm. Fair enough. Yeah, yeah, no. No, you know, it's interesting when you think back. At the building alone, remember? Oh, Wasn't yeah. Wasn't it yellow and gray? Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. something, and there's serious. And the thing I remember was Helen Watson, right, with that red hair. Yep. Uh-huh. And um, if you did not get in that room in time, she shut the door. Oh, yeah. You just stand outside looking through the window because <laughs> that door was shut. And locked. She did, right. She didn't no, play. No, no fire hazard. <laughs> no, no, it, didn't no. matter. it didn't matter if the building caught on fire and we all no. burned up. because... Most were sitting over on that wall in front of the used car lot. Remember that used car lot? Yeah, we're out there smoking yeah. cigarettes <laughs> right. and stuff, right? Yeah, no, I wasn't doing that. No, no, you weren't. But no. you were looking, waving. I was looking. You know what? Um, I was in my 30s when I was in hair school. So I just felt like I was an old man, right? Right. Because everybody was so much younger. And I just wanted to get out of there. I feel you that. know, and Sharon will tell you all during uh, lunch breaks. I did the blue book. Was y'all's books blue? I'm pretty sure they were. Yeah, yeah the blue book, and we had to hand it in mm-hmm. uh, to get that little black stamp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some of them acquired them better than others. Right. Some, some of us earned them. Some of us acquired them. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, so I I did all that. The damn roller sets. So I, you- I just knocked them out. You said 30. So you started in your 30s. What gave you the desire to, to, to be a hairdresser at 30? My, um, my first uh, dab in the fashion world was uh, I went to school and got an associate in fashion merchandising. Mm-hmm. So display, sort of. And I had become a personal shopper. So I stopped dressing mannequins and started dressing live clients, women, mostly. And... That they had two complaints. Never could find anybody to take their clothes in and alter them the way they need it. And you got to remember, this is when women had to wear suits to work. Like pantsuits. And dresses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The pants came a little later in some, uh, especially in law firms. But, um, and then they would say, we never get a good haircut. We cannot find anybody to do our hair. And I thought, um not going to sew, but I bet mm-hmm. I can do hair, and I went back to school. I worked full-time and went to school full-time. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah, but that's when department stores were busy. We were open until 10 o'clock, right. so I could go to school in the day and take and work at night and then on the weekends. Wow. So, Yeah, that's so, crazy. I yeah, think the rest um, of us were bumming it, trying to just make it through school. And yeah, well, some of us are achievers. and. <laughs> Some of us are some not. of us are driven <laughs> to be <laughs> successful, and then there and some of us have podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> some are sitting here in the hotel lobby room. I mean, but anyway, I mean, it's all good. <laughs> right. So you kind, of, so you had like almost like a full career before hair school. Then I did. That's crazy. Because yeah. like when I was telling people, I was like, um, that Monty's coming on the podcast. Like, I'm going to say 99 percent of the people didn't realize that um, that you did hair. Right. I, I agree. When, when no. I was like, oh, went to hair school, with Monty. They're like. Monty does hair, and I go, I know, I don't understand it either. <laughs> I know. It, it's really one of the big uh, misnomers about me, you know. And if you watch the show, which, by the way, I didn't, because I lived it, right? right. Um, it, you know, I'd flip those ponytails up, and you wouldn't believe how many people 
would call in and say, would, would he do my daughter's hair? And then we would say, well, he is a hairdresser, but no, because I'm filming. <laughs> and then that one episode where I sang the Ave Maria. Did you ever sing? No. So I'd get calls, will he sing at my wedding? No. Let's hear a couple bars of Ave Maria. <laughs> Ave Maria. Oh, yeah, I'd have him sing at my wedding. Yeah, right? 100%. Wow. Look at you. Who Multi-talented, knew? man. Who, who Hair, knew? clothes, voice. Yeah, yeah, pretty much cut it all, don't I? You got, you got it all. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, so Monty, kind of tell our listeners, like, where you grew up. Ah, uh, that's a big one. Um, West Virginia, you know, uh, and I think I shared a little bit about that. And I proudly say it. I mean, it's not anything, but I grew up in a house with no running water and an outside toilet. And I went to school in a two-room schoolhouse my great-grandfather put in our community so that we only had to walk a mile, and my parents, my mother and her siblings, had to walk five. So he brought the school up into our neck, up in our holla, right. so that we could do it. Dude, that's cr- I mean, like, in... in, in I know. I mean, I you, like, were, you weren't born in the Civil War. Like, right. Like... I know. I, you, you I, I'm that. having, like, Walton vibes for I know, those of us that remember. Right? And I was like, wow. And you think about that. I've written a book, well, let's just say, I've got 12 chapters for a book. I just haven't pushed it all the way. And the book's title is, um, will be, The Boy Behind the Water Fountain. And you know in school, because, you know, I, there, and then we moved to Virginia, and I'm like, oh, my God, a house with bathrooms, um, sidewalks, you know, all these things, school with the bell that we didn't have to pull the rope to ring. <laughs> right. I mean, and I'm thinking on oh, lockers, all this stuff. And uh, it was wow. just, it wasn't, it wasn't as, it wasn't as charming as it could have been for me. But anyway, in school, the, the school, once we moved here, you know, those big brown water fountains that are in the hallway. Right. So they're in the alcove, right? Well, I was very thin and little. So I would slide in beside it when the bell rang to keep from being bullied and pushed and having my books thrown. And I would stand there, and when the bell would ring, I'd rush into the classroom. So I figured out where all, you know, right? Yeah. So I could get through it. And then I joined choir. So we wore robes, and nobody could see I didn't have good clothes. So Mm -hmm. it's not bad. It's just you figure out a way to make it work for you, right? Right. So did you, did you ever it. did you ever feel like especially living in the hollow, did you ever feel like a need to like butch it up or anything? Really look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I mean seriously. <laughs> I have been asked some really interesting questions. That's top of the list now. <laughs> of course it um, is. <laughs> right. No, I mean, but you know when you live in a community, my grandparents were across the street, my aunts were my next door neighbors. I went to school with my cousins. So you're surrounded by family that knows who you are. Mm-hmm. So you never got picked on or bullied because that's just Monty, right? Right. It's when you took me out of that environment and that enclave of family and friends. And then I come to a new school. Yeah, it's totally different. Why did, why did you guys leave the family? Um, my mother, I have three sisters, and she, um, she just wanted a better way for us. So my father found a job in Virginia. So we moved out. Moved out and moved on. Uh-huh. Up and at him. And then when you went to the new school, because um, it t- kind of takes me back to my childhood when, um, you know, I grew up on welfare. And mm-hmm. uh, I remember going to school and, and having, like, like the, the super cheap shoes and everybody had the nice shoes right. and stuff like that. And uh, so when you went to the new school uh, and you said now you, there's water fountain. So all the, you had, you have a house right. with running water, but you still had your old clothes. I did. You? I did. And when you went to the new school, did, could you, could you see or feel the difference? Oh, of course, you know, and it was funny, you know, you're in, you're in a situation where, they actually are picking best dressed, Mm. most talented, you know, so the, the herd is being narrowed already. And I, of course I was not on any of that, you know, radar, but um, it makes you even more aware, you know, right. Cause there's yearbooks. Now there's all these things. We didn't have that when I grew up, you know, where I went to school, we're all same. 
You know, right. you don't know you're poor if you're living with poor, right? Yeah. yeah. We all do the same. But I will tell you, when I moved here, my math and English, no longer is this case, by the way, but put me in a grade ahead. Of oh, really? I, yeah. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. That's so really I, interesting. I was having good education, right? Right. So I went th- down the tubes. <laughs> <laughs> So do you think by like um by having like I think you put like cheap or cheap clothes, do you think that that kind of like sets you up as far as like working in department stores, you know, being right. being the best dressed in the room? Well, it did, but you know, I was very fortunate that my parents were never when we go shopping and we want they never said get away from there, we can't afford that, we're going to do it. They would say stay in school, get an education, get a job, you can buy that and anything else you want. So we were taught that was the way to be motivated to it. And I've always, my mother, of course, but I, and my dad was a sharp dresser uh, for what we had. You know, I I look back at some of the old photos and go, wow, you know, but um, I just got fixated on, you know, fabrics and fits and tailoring and then shoes, you know, who knew, you know, and I tell everybody when we're dressing the brides, um, you know, we talk about the options brides have, you know, that they have when choosing a gown. But you know what? Now the skies have raised up because guess what? They're for our clothes. We have a one button, two button, three button. We have a double breasted. We have a peak lapel. We have a notch lapel. We have a bandit collar. We have a double vent, single vent, or no vent. We have pleated pants, no pants. We have a cuff. We have slim fit, or we have bells. So you know what? We can make some decisions now. That's it, right? Right. Crazy. I love right? that. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just so crazy. That is so crazy. Mm-hmm. How did you... Obviously, I, y'all don't prescribe for that. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but if you did, they're, they're, I mean, but, it's but out there. Those options it's are out there. there. It's out there, there yeah, for yeah. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, op- <laughs> those options it's are It's funny because I remember my grandfather, he always wore dress pants and, right. and a button-up shirt. Right. Every and you're day, like, how did... How'd they do that? And no air conditioning. That's why. Yeah, no yeah, right? car, nothing. There was, no. On a casual day, he had dress pants and, yeah. a, and, and a dress shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it is kind of crazy, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And we also got rid of, like, the hats, right? The, the, right. The, the, like, the fedoras and stuff. Yeah, you know, President Kendi took a top to that because when he was inaugurated, he held his hat instead of wearing it. And then the men thought, oh, we don't need a hat. Oh, is that a true story? Yeah. So that's what kind of, kind of like killed that fashion. Mm-hmm. He stopped wearing hats. That's amazing. Right? That's, you, it's amazing how you can be swayed and think what is right to do and not to do. One of my favorite stories is, and I have many, by the way, um, is when Winston Churchill came to visit the States. And he's a portly guy, right? Y'all understand that. <laughs> um, anyway, um, relating guys. Anyway, uh, <laughs> anyway, so he comes. I mean, over. I'll take that, but Churchill, right? Come on. right. <laughs> so his vest, he couldn't button the bottom button because of his belly. So Americans go, "Oh, that must be the new fashion." To this day, we don't button the bottom button of our vest. I was wondering about that. Isn't that crazy? That is like it yeah. just it just got in there and now it's just kind of what we do. Well, I, like I think like um like I think powdered wigs was one of the kings was suffering from syphilis, right? And he was going bald, so he put on this wig, and there and you then, are. And then for the next two hundred years, you know, uh, all, all, all the way to the inception of the United States, like you know, statesmen wore powdered wigs, right. and I think in England they, they still, still wear do. them, mm-hmm. and the judges wear them, right? right? That's so crazy. I love it. That's crazy. So how did you get from like hairdresser to stylist to to the show? Like like how did you what was oh, that journey I like you or were how did you get say up? movie star in there somewhere? Well, that's coming. That's oh, after okay. the book. Who's gonna play you in the book? In the oh. movie. Do you know if we ever did a movie? I think I'd have to do myself. Well I you know, expected no other answer. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to have to do a little work to get me back to that 16-year-old, you know, with a 27-inch waist. Can you imagine? Think about your thighs and think that's my waist. I don't want to think about you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm giving you guys a hard time. No, no, it's cool. We'll take it. We'll great. take it. So, so, yeah, so how did you find the show from, from I mean. So... I, I was working. I'm gonna. I'm gonna bullet this because it bores me. Because uh, it's yeah, intense. So I worked at the Red Door, 
-hmm. Beside the red door was a bridal salon called Priscilla Boston, no longer in business. They could not find anybody ever to do bridal hair. I have three sisters. You're not going to get to me. You know what? I've, I've seen it all, done it all. You're, you're, you're not going to ruffle my feathers. So I started doing that. Well, the owner of Priscilla Boston came over, got her hair cut, and said, Monty, why don't you come sell dresses with me? Used to be, you know, a personal shopper. I'm like, I don't know. I don't want to do wedding gowns. And she goes, well, think about it. You can do, sell them the dress, style them, and do their hair. And I went, you know what? I could do that. So... I started becoming a trunk show rep. So I worked with them for a while. And in 2000, I was voted most preferred uh, stylist for hair and makeup for bridal at the Washingtonian. And just because I have a tolerance, right? right, <laughs> so right. I wasn't that talented right. then. Yeah, I'm trying to do updos. You know, I'm putting them in rubber bands and taking a Marcel curling iron and going through it and pinning it and hope it lasts to the reception. <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know what it's doing. But... Um, Anyway, so I did that, and then I worked for a couple other wedding dress designers. Lori was the top account of this one designer I worked for, and we were in New York showing the dresses, and she comes into, we had a suite at the Waldorf, so we had butlers. I mean, this designer, God, she is great, crazy as shit. But <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, and so I opened the door, and, you know, I'm there to greet all the top clients. Well, I've got a list. I know how much to sell. I know who they are. I know where they're. So when you come in, I go, oh, Miss Allen, I'm Monty Durham. I'm the image director for the company. Please take your seat so we can start the show because we're waiting for her. And she goes, who are you? I go, I'm Monty Durham. I'm the image director. She looks me up and down and says, you will be in my store next week. Okay, Miss Allen, if you'll take your seat so we can start the show. So I go in the back and I go, who's this ballsy blonde out there telling me where I'm going to go when you know, I do my own scheduling? I was in her salon. <laughs> <laughs> and we became fast friends. Her, um, her granddaughters are my goddaughters. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, I don't claim them, though. God, they're hellions. Oh, my God. But anyway, um, no, they're sweet girls. But uh, so Lori has a you know a store four levels huge Kleinfelds had just taken off on TLC they were in I think their ninth season of filming and it, it you know it it's not really rocket science but if they get a good format for a show mm -hmm. they just take it to different cities the housewives for example right. or whatever they just take it to other cities and use the same format so they knocked on Lori's door and said, you know, we're thinking about filming, and, you know, she's got the space, 15,000 wedding gowns. Wow. I mean, 1,500, pardon me. And um, just all this stuff. So we're like, all right. So she calls me up, and I go, mm, you know, I don't think so. It's not, not, not anything I want to do. And she's like, no, come on down here. And I go, I, it just didn't pull me. I was like, no, I'm good. So she told me to get my ass down there. <laughs> so um, I went down. And there we are, 12 years. We filmed nonstop. That's good. So you came down just for the show then? I came down, they do a sizzle reel. Right. You know, and a stack, you know, where they put the storyline together. And they filmed us in the store. If you see those early shows, oh my God, I'm like, do you like that dress? <laughs> would, would, would you like to try on another dress? The fitting room is over there. And I'm looking at the camera, and then I go, oh, over there. <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 the hardest thing is getting used to a camera six inches from your face, and you can't look at it. Right. You know, you have to say, but now I can do it. And and then we're not allowed to talk to camera, right? Right. So we have to talk off camera and look at different things, so they're filming us. And then we have to make the pitch to camera. So, you know, you're getting confused, the message. But you know, I could be talking like this. I go, Monty, talk to the camera. I go, good afternoon, Monty Durham here. And I'm sitting with a great team here in the Hotel Indigo doing a podcast. <laughs> so it's funny how you can just flip it, right? right. right. But it took me, you know, I was green for a while. Um, I was very green, and they sent me over, and I covered the Royal Wedding with Kate Middleton. So I was outside the Abbey, you know, going, 
ladies and gentlemen, she's getting out of the car. Oh my God, look at the gown. And we do not know exactly who's doing it, but I'm going to make a bet for you. First time I've seen a royal bride go into the abbey with a shorter veil. Look at the tiara, a gift from her majesty for her new granddaughter-in-law. And ladies and gentlemen, let me remind you, Kate Middleton's walking in as a commoner. Next time we see her, she'll be a princess. Oh, my gosh. Right? You must have been in all your glory, though. Hold oh on. Oh, my Dude, God. I can't imagine. So I was there, and we got up. I had to be up at 4 in the morning. Their time. For, yeah, for makeup. And I, I don't do makeup. I don't like stuff on my skin. So, uh, yes, this is natural. Oh, that's a lie. <gasps> and I haven't had any work done <laughs> yet. Yeah. Unlike Lori. I mean, she's had everything pulled on but her ankles. <laughs> so... That might have happened in college. Who knows? But anyway, um, so we, uh, yeah, so it was a very long, and I wore a new pair of shoes, of course. I'm oh, like, no, you don't do oh, that. Oh, and that's look, a rookie mistake. Oh, look, my whole mission was what would Jackie do? You know, it's before the book, right? They put, I'm like, what would she wear? What would she wear? So I was in New York, and there was this beautiful navy blue Givenchy suit, which was one of Jackie's favorite. Uh, you know, designers. So I bought that and wore that. And I wore an English maker shirt and tie. My grandfather's cuff buttons, my other grandfather's wristwatch, a fleur de leaf pen for royalty. And um, jewelry. So, and my Prada shoes, brand new. They didn't hurt my feet. They and did? We, they did not. Oh, okay. And I started at four and we didn't wrap until one in the morning. Wow. Did you? Y'all know how that is. <laughs> did you like just c try to collect as much information from on the wedding that you could and, yeah and i will tell you when she we were outside the goring hotel which is where she was married um you know it's the only private hotel still held privately in london with a private garden just thought i'd throw that out uh anyway yeah we i i'm an anglophile because my when I went to school there for Graham Webb, right, I just fell in love with England. So I just started from then. So I was pretty much up on it. So we were standing, I, I was stationed outside the Goring Hotel the night before. And we were there first thing in the morning because the wedding was at 11 o'clock. Do you know that 11 o'clock is still the most formal time to be married? All the royals get married at 11 o'clock. Really? Yep. It's just their thing, morning weddings. Um Anyway, so I saw the SUV pull up, and they we knew the doorman alerted us that the designer was coming to help her dress. And I see, so she gets out of the car. We know it's a girl. And she had that big furry hat with the flap down and the sides down, and she reached out. I was, in, I was on the sidewalk so I could see her step out. She stepped out onto the sidewalk, and I go at Sarah Burton with Alexander McQueen. That's who did the dress. They go, how you know? Those are her shoes she had on on her runway show last week. I know it's it's her, but they wouldn't let me announce it. But I knew exactly who designed the gown. And I stayed at the Goring Hotel and got a private tour, which was great. And a little bit of fun fact about that, that Kate Middleton did not dress in the suite upstairs because her dress wouldn't fit in the lift. They brought her down and she dressed in the dining room and oh, then came wow. out and got in the car. Yeah. That is crazy, right? Yeah. That's, when you went there with Graham Webb, Ugh. <laughs> we got a, uh, like a VIP tour of the house of parliament. That was incredible. I didn't get shit. They ran me around as Helen Watson. She owes me on this. <laughs> I became like one of the mentors for the students. Because, you know, I'm in my Because you own the age. place. Tony said you own right, the place. Right, right. So I was 18. <laughs> so I was chaperone. That's funny. I was a chaperone. Well, you know what happened to us is we, 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 so we flew there. And once we were in, we were sitting in the airport and nobody had made any reservations for us. So they were supposed to, like, we were supposed to stay at a hostel, but no hostel could take us because nobody had made a reservation. So we're there homeless. So Graham put us all up in a hotel, and we all had our own private room. We didn't have to share any rooms or anything when we were there. And then as an apology to us, he had a friend that worked at Parliament. So um, he, he gave us a private uh, right. a private tour through through Parliament. Now we, were we even got to see uh, 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 Henry VIII's balls, tennis balls. 
where I used to play tennis in the, in the basement of the House of Parliament. It was incredible. <laughs> oh God, there was a look for you. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. Something to Come back to your, us. Something, something to put in your <laughs> journal. I've, I've got a visual. It's hard to step out of this right now. I mean, let me shake this off. Well, he was uh, just as Henry VIII. <laughs> <laughs> perfect. <laughs> perfect. No, we stayed in a youth hostel in Bayswater. So we were over there. But what we did, we went to London School of Fashion. We went to the theaters and did theatrical makeup. We went to the, you know, of course, Royal Albert. Um, we went to Bath. We went to Stonehenge. We yeah. went to, um, God, we went all over. Because, you know, Helen, and then Helen's mother hosted us for tea, well, afternoon tea oh, in her sweet. garden. So, yeah, so a little different experience. That is really cool. But it was good. We did, when I was with PR and Partners, we did uh, part of, uh, we, we were at the Royal Al, uh, Albert Hall. You did yeah. the alternative show there, yeah. right? Yeah, it was incredible. Yeah, I forget where we did. Um, we did a fashion show, and we did the hair for it. And I'll never forget the poor little girl. Which I, of course, they'd give her to me. And I wasn't even supposed to do hair. I had, you know, we hadn't been on the floor that long cutting hair. So I cut it. What did I cut? The Jackie Bob. <laughs> so, surprise, um, surprise. Right. So this 10-year-old went out with this very, very mature hair day. <laughs> What's the obsession with Jackie? You know what? I, there is a lot of things. Um, one mainly is she she stayed quiet. You could say whatever you want about her. You could try, but yeah, she stayed very very quiet. And I love some of her. You know, think about it. she wasn't raised to be a states person, right? Certain knowledge, but on um, after her husband became president, her press conference, and they asked her. They said, "Well." Um, couple things they said how do you plan to wear your hair in the white house and she goes what does my hair do have to do with my husband's ability to be president mm. i mean she's just curb and then um they also ask her what did they what did she feel would be a moment of something that her husband's accomplishment uh, as president and she wisely just looked and said one man can make a difference and every man should try. So mm. I, I, I use that a lot. That's good. Did, yeah. you, ever, did you ever meet her? I did not. I, I know you're going to find this hard to believe, but we ran in different circles. <laughs> Surprising. Yeah, right? I mean, who knew? <laughs> Surprising. What, what yeah. do you think your reaction would have been if you met her? Faint. You think? I would have fainted. No, probably not. You know, it's like uh, some people that meet me on the streets, especially the younger girls, you know, you think they're going to pass out because they, 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 you know, you get that type of reaction. So I'd probably be doing the same thing. Right. But I may have the opportunity, fingers crossed, because, um, you know, we spoke about this earlier, or you led to it. Um, I had the Jackie Candy collection, and I just donated everything to the First Ladies Museum in Canton, Ohio. So I had an exact replica of her wedding gown. Identical, oh. 50 yard silk taffeta. Um, I had a Kendi Rocker chair. My grandmother always called it a Kendi Rocker, but the stamp and marks and making song is exactly the one that President used in the White House. And photos and magazines and articles that, you know, that have long gone. So they came last month and we loaded up and off it went. So, did, did was, that, was that bittersweet? You know what? There, there, sometimes it's just ready to let it go, right? So I was in that room 20 years I had the dress. So and I've been collecting since the 70s. Wow. So um and you know it, just losing my parents here recently you realize they're just items, right? Just things. And I look around and think of my family members what would they do? Like you know I had to clean out a house. I had to you know uh. you know get get rid of stuff, try to find the proper home for things. Who's going to take care of this? Who? And I thought, and I, there's just nobody that has that passion. So why not give it to a museum? And it's a teaching museum. So they, um, if, if they, they have a library. So if they have duplicates of the books, they loan them out. And in some cases, they very well may have three or four of the same, because I'd get three or four of the same books in case one damaged or if I wanted to cut a page out. So I've encouraged them to auction off 
anything they have duplicates of to raise more money. And, you know, I'll come out and lead the team on that. But they've been in contact with uh, Caroline Kendi's staff members and hoping that she'll make it. We're going to, it's not been announced, but in the spring there's going to be a big exhibit. We're going to open the exhibit. I'll go out and help. And Canton. set up, yeah, and set up the. Uh, so when the you're in Canton, center. do you think you're going to go to the NFL Hall of Fame? Probably go, not going to be on my list. But <laughs> how come that doesn't shock me? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, but yeah. if you're in Canton, you can visit both museums, right? right? Yeah, right. yeah. Right. and see Monty's win, collection win. there. Exactly. Win win. Com- complete. So, will they give you love it there? Will they? You know, this is the Monty Durham collection. Oh yeah, yeah. I think I will have a hall. <laughs> the whole thing. Yeah, right. With it's your, a Victorian with your face, house. Just Monty. Yeah, right. Just Monty. Uh-huh. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. So what's even better? Um, a photographer. You know, it, it's for me, it's just kind of peculiar. But anyway, so a photographer happened to take a photo of me. And, you know, I'm pretty casual about it. I'm like, all right, if you like it, I like it. I mean, it's just I've seen myself. Trust me. I've seen myself get out of the shower. Trust me. We're good. <laughs> we are so good. Um, but anyway... So he presents, he comes to salon with a three foot by two foot oil painting of me and gives it to me. Steve, I mean, he's a very talented photographer. Coming out of the shower? No. (laughs) (laughs) That would be talented. (laughs) They'd take more in talent to get me to paint that one. (laughs) But anyway, so I I told him... uh, I called him up and I said, "Look, you've got to sign this and all this, stuff, but I'm I'm going to put it on exhibit with the other things with the Kendi Museum. So it's good, you know. You just got all this stuff, and you're like, what do you do with it? What do you do with it? Right? And you look around. Who's going to be who's, who's going to be the caretaker of a lot of stuff? So this well, was in blown, the great spot. I was blown away when you gave us a tour of your salon and just the history and the just the even from. The generations of your family. Yeah, and, and, unfortunate. And every, it was just, yeah, it was so beautifully put together. Thank you. Yeah. Well, you know, when you don't have much, you make the most of what you can have. So when my parents and grandparents would show me these artifacts or things, I would take them immediately and get them framed to preserve them. Um, you know, my mom and dad's signature is on their marriage license. Do you know what joy that gives me to look at that? Because they're no longer with me. Right. But um, do you know what I mean? It's things 100%. like that. So right. yeah, I'm, I'm really old heart romanticist. That, I, I, so all that gonna, stuff. That. That we're that going to try to, after after we finish recording the podcast, we're going to try to get back get back over to the salon and kind of take a tour. And we'll put the video up as well on yeah. the, um, at the end of the podcast. So okay. that's cool. Yeah. So do you still have a... Now, did I remember correctly? Did you get a... Refusal or an RSVP no from from the yeah you got it yeah and so but and remember I try to shrug it off as uh, I just want your name on the guest list you know but yeah I did do you still have it or or is that over there no you know what I you didn't frame that you didn't frame that it's framed I've got to find it I mean you I need to I need to edit my house. I live in an older like you house. Started. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm I'm on a good roll. I live, and I think this is something most people don't. I don't live in a gated community. I live in a very small house. It uh, is 78 years old, so you know what the closets are like. If you walk out my front door and take a left, go across the ditch, past the dumpsters, and then past the <laughs> pizza place, you're in a nice little shopping center. Oh, nice. So there we go, right? There you are. And I tell people, and they go, right. And I go, no, come to my house. I'll walk you across the little path. You'll see it. But um, <laughs> What's your uh, address so people can just Yeah, right. You? Just come on out. Just come on out. Come out for the tour. Well, it's so funny because when we moved in to the house, uh, you know, they were showing. So all the kids, now they're in college, you know, and they come by. But I have one neighbor, and he, it, his son, little guy, and he, of course, no, he's not. But he had a distinctive way of saying my name. So whenever I would see him, he would he would pronunciate it to such a point. And he still does as an adult man, you know. And he'd go, "Hello, Monty." <laughs> that's how because his mother was teaching him to. Monty. But he still, but he still says that's, that's how he does. It. So that's cute. But anyway, yeah, my neighborhood doesn't even have sidewalks. I mean. 
Yeah, it's a mixed bag of tricks, and I love it. The diversity in my neighborhood's great. I so like his it. mother was mad at you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, go get Monty. Right. <laughs> he said it was a first and a middle name. Yeah, yeah right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. Yeah, keep on going. So. Did, did you continue to do hair through, like, um, even through, like, filming schedules? And stuff I like did that? not. Um, this is the first hair salon I've opened. I had a little, I called it a lean-to in West Virginia. I bought a, a house back Uh where I grew up and since have sold it. But I had a little shop there just to get my hands in it. Because even though we're filming, I still went to the hair shows in New York and took classes. And Mm -hmm. so that's why if you go on the website, you're going to see I do color. I don't do highlights because I've lost that rhythm. You know, it's going to take me a while to, you know, because unless you do that every day. Do y'all do highlights? Uh Uh-huh. Frightening. (laughs) <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so back to other talents that we may have. But anyway, you know, it, it's a rhythm. And right. I just, and I'm like, we have such talented staff members. You know, Sharon Francis, sure. who taught us in school, obviously didn't teach you to do finger waves. But anyway. <laughs> no, I could not figure out finger waves. Yeah. Um, so she's our director of education. So she makes sure everybody's in compliance and that we're on the cutting edge, no pun intended, of what the trends are. And and so we're aware of them. Now, we're in historic Old Town Alexandria, so our um, cutting edge may not be other people's cutting edge, right? So a little more conservative, but um, no, we, we do. So we hard, like everybody literally has a master in coloring at the salon. So why... Why should I put myself through <laughs> foils, <laughs> right? I, th- right? They're going to do it better even if I do get up to snuff. They're already doing it better. So, How do you maintain a client, though, with as, as much traveling that you do? Because, I mean, I, I, I follow you on the Facebook, and, like, you're always, like, somewhere. Yeah, somewhere. You're always yeah. somewhere, but not here. Right, exactly. Um, well, you know, think about it. I mean, you're looking at it, first of all. <laughs> Second of all, there is somewhat talent in there. No, but... Um, it's great. They're understanding, but the beautiful thing about that, guess what? They rebook. Mm. There's no lag. They know. And I'm not fully booked. I mean, you know, anybody can get on my book. It's not like, uh, you know, it's anything great. We're open seven days a week. Right. Um, people go, why? And I go, girls, I pay rent seven days a week. That <laughs> makes sense to that's me. That's why. Um, mm-hmm. Sunday's one of our most profitable days, actually. Shorter day, payroll-wise and you know, talent-wise. So, um, yeah, so, so but, we, um, we right. make one hairdresser. He, he colors, I cut. There you we, go. We See? share our clientele. I like that. We share, we are so, I'm, I'm sometimes can be a one hit wonder. They'll come in, they'll, if their daughters have done great at school, they'll come in and get a haircut with me. And during the time we had to wear a mask, they didn't realize it was me and the mother <laughs> didn't tell them. So they're sitting there. And then they're looking around, and they see photos, or they see things, and then they start freaking out. But, uh, no, it's great. interesting. Yeah. But um, they'll come in and get that, get an autograph and a photo, and I probably won't see them again until they get married, and so I'll be too old to do it anyway. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and a lot of my clients, because my schedule does shift, uh, will go to stylists. And we're very good about keeping notes and colors and everything, and, and the biggest joke in the salon is my colors. You will either be a five, six, N, seven, eight, nine, N. Oh, when we get into H, you may be at 801. <laughs> um, that means Ash, by the way. Right. But um, my formulas are so straightforward, 20 volume. You know, it, it's so ridiculous. I go into their formulas. I'm like, a quarter ounce, tunes. right? <laughs> a quarter ounce of this and three ounces of this. Mix, start at the front panel, work my way back. I'm like, Monty's like, where's the eight end? <laughs> right. I'm like, we're changing your color today. <laughs> we're simplifying. Right. The whole mission statement, you don't need a lot of products if you have the right products. What the hell are y'all doing in here? <laughs> That's crazy. I mean, five tubes of color in a bowl. And then they measure it on the little scale. Do y'all use scales? Oh, yeah. Always have, Monty. Right. This isn't anything new. I don't use scale. You just use your eye? Yeah. I mean, what's wrong? You're old enough to do that. I can't see anymore. It's yeah. a problem with just using my eye. Right. No. <laughs> I've, I've never used a scale. I mix it to the consistency well, I, that I want. 
with when PR and Partners grew, they were I mean they were such a huge well of salon. Uh, they were all about color waste. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So they started using so scales, we, and then yeah, and then uh, salon scales uh, we've been using lately uh, for the last couple of years now. That uh, which is great because you mix your color, mm-hmm. and then you put your bowl back on there, it, and it tells you how much waste it's in the bowl, so it'll recalculate, and you'll know how much to put in next time. So that way it cuts oh. color waste. So do they take notes on that? Yeah. Then, yeah. Then, I mean, so you yeah, so let's then you say go, okay. you use a half a tube and right. now so, you only so need then, a quarter So then you of weigh it and then it, it reweighs it and then it recalculates the price. And it also, it, it, it's um, your client pays for the color. So it's not so like if you use like, you know, 30 ounces, mm-hmm. then, then there's a price for what 30 ounces well, of color costs. If y'all have time to do all that, which is fascinating to me, it's well, great. It's done on your phone, so it's just quick. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you're not as busy as we are but <laughs> anyway um that would take a little time for us but okay i, I appreciate i mean, the, I mean there's this thing called technology monty <laughs> you know i'm old school clearly <laughs> right <laughs> old <laughs> just just take the school off just put old right he's like, he's like where do you plug the scale in at right exactly <laughs> no actually i bought batteries today sharon's gonna be proud of me i bought batteries because there are Oh my God! If the scale goes dead, do you know what? I mean, it's it's like a black cloud in the salon. What 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 are we going to do? And I go, you mix the color to the consistency that you need. Oh no way! The, no, no, they way. can't do it. They're, it's handicapped. They, I can't do that. It's been too many years, Monty. Oh my God! Come on, you can't see anymore. Can't mm-hmm. do that. Hey, back to the show. Um, how's, okay, how's Lori doing? She's doing great. You know, I'm happy to say she is cancer free and living the good life. She's That's great. Awesome. And you know, she fell on the end of the last season. She tripped and fell. She shattered one wrist, broke one, broke her Ooh. nose. Implants oh got dislodged, and <laughs> then she busted ribs. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's pretty serious. So, um, but she's recovered. She's great. I mean, yeah, she's doing so, really good. I heard another rumor too that um, that maybe or maybe not you and Lori end up in a uh, in the UK. Oh, what is, it to this, the, what, is there any uh, yeah. truth to this rumor? <laughs> I don't know. Should, should I? It'll be the first I've spoken about publicly. This is kind of public, right? I mean, I would say it's public. Okay, well, let's go for it. Um, we were approached by a media company out of the UK. Uh, last month and they went to Lori's publicist and said, do you think that they would be interested in filming again? And they, Lori and I happened to be in New York at the time at Bridal Market and we're like, sure. We're, you're always willing to talk, right? Always open to conversation. Yeah. Our segments with TLC has closed out. So we're not, we're no longer under contract with TLC. So we're free agents, right? So we're like, no, yeah, sure, let's talk. So the uh, uh, media company said, all right, great to know. We'll get back to you probably in a couple months, and we'll have a conversation. Two days later, they called back and said, can they be in Florida on November 2nd? And we're like looking. I'm like, yeah, it's Tuesday. I'm off on Tuesdays. So I'm like, sure, I can make that happen. We hang up, and we get first-class tickets on our phone like, Five minutes later, I'm like, okay, all right. So we go down. It's a great story. We go down. They put us in a less than desirable hotel. So, um, oh, yeah. So, you know, we're, we're, we're bougie when it comes to hotels. <laughs> <We're just laughs> the one thing that you get used to with TLC is black cars. You have a, you know, you have an assistant and nice hotels, Always with security, and not because we're stars or anything. It's just that if anything they need, their security team with TLC can hook up with that team. Or if something goes wrong in a hotel, they know we're secure because if something happens, we're on their watch. Right, right. So, so we get used to staying in these <laughs> hotels. But anyway, we moved over to the Ritz, of course. <laughs> oh my God, it's funny. But anyway, so we had breakfast. A, a lovely chat, and the where it lands, it looks like it's tilting to be filmed in the UK if we film, mm-hmm. and we're going to meet up uh, second week of January, and they're going to present to us with some ideas. So uh, are you thinking that it's going to be like a similar show? I think it's going to, uh, you know, they're they're very vague because they, they, they want you to participate as well, so... 
it won't be in Lori's store. That is next. Um, it probably will deal with bridal because that's what we're known for. But it may be a little more um, like br- bridal redos or something of that nature. Like you know, well, that's exciting. So what, it is exciting. Do you, do you, does this uh, does this media company do they have ties in the U.S. too? Like do they do. To watch they were it? over here with Paramount Pictures. They were filming for Paramount. They were doing that. Yeah. And they're a very strong force in the uh, media world. So it's not like we're working with a startup company. So for them to reach out, we feel confident that. And now that they want to regroup in January, probably in Dallas, I think, was the last, is where they'll be stateside. So um, we're just, you know, we're just floating along. They've reached out a couple of times through emails, just say, hey, we're excited and all that so well, that's pretty cool it, it is cool but you know when we sat down the one of the conversations i had right off bat i just put my retirement into the salon i just opened <laughs> so i can't step away from that right and uh i can't be more gone more than 10 days you know i can't even be gone for two weeks uh the energy in the salon drops if i'm not there believe it or not i could see that yeah i could definitely see that so you know, I have be whether I'm doing clients or not. You know, people expect to see me. My name's on the building. Sure, people expect to see me, and it's funny if people see me walk by inside the salon, they knock on the window and take a photo. <laughs> I mean, it's just it's so crazy. That's so. Nice. And we, you, you let us in your salon. That kind of brings the energy down too. <laughs> yeah, I was. Going, I was. I was Truly, uh, I was going to ask if y'all wanted to put on a Monty robe or something. But, yeah, but Monty uh, robe. Yeah. But we've been fortunate. We were well received here. It was interesting. I, I had the windows covered while we were putting the salon together. And it just said, see y'all in September. And it had my signature on it. Oh, that's so cool. So people thought I was opening a bridal shop. Sure. It, so we got all these applications for sales for bridal gowns. And I'm like, no, it's not. Because to, to your point, they didn't know I was a licensed hairstylist. So, uh, the question, interesting. I, the second most question that I got is that a lot of people didn't know you're from the DC area. And yeah. So, so did you travel? So what was your schedule like when you were, when you were filming in Atlanta? Did you, Brutal. did you live there? Or did you, were you flying back and forth? Back and forth. My parents weren't well. So, um, I would go down. They, they scheduled the bride first and per our, my contract with TLC, I had to work so many hours and so many days. And so, but they were lenient because I had, so I was on a plane average three times a week. Wow. And, you know, depending upon the scheduling. And I stayed in a hotel just because, you know, like, but I never, my first, <laughs> here's a little thing, but my Facebook page says Atlanta. And my cousins were going, did you move to Atlanta? And I go, no, it's just, it's hard to explain when people meet you and they go, you live here? And I go, 27 years I've been in this house. And they're like, but you're in Atlanta. And I go, yeah, but I live here. And they go, but you film in Atlanta. I go, most people commute by car. I commute it by plane. <laughs> and it was commercial. I didn't fly private. So, um, yeah, you just get used to that. And it was challenging opening because... Um, thank God I had ordered everything in December for this line because, as you've seen, it's small, so everything was custom. And then I wanted that layout with the petitions and things. So um, the company for the building that we're in had their architect draw up, and then I hired an architect, so I didn't have to run interference. He he knew exactly what I wanted, so it worked out. Um, and so come around COVID hits full time I'm and how up, long are you open at this point uh, we haven't been open we didn't open, oh, you in didn't t- open. Yeah, we've only oh. been open two years wow so open in September imagine that COVID at the height of it Whoa. COVID um an election year the winter you know women don't do their hair as much in the Winter, as they do in the summer, they wait for the holidays and do it. So I'm like, oh, my God, what am I doing? Unfortunately, my father had passed away 11 days before I opened. So I was backstepping, taking, tr- getting that situated and stuff. So we had a flood in the salon two days before we opened because the painter, you saw the red ceilings, right? right yeah, I went, yeah. He was painting over the vent and hooked onto the water sprinkler oh. and pulled it out and set not only the salon did it get flooded, but what was worse, 
Everybody in those condos above me, which are extremely pricey, had to evacuate. We all, and they're oh, standing there no. looking at me like, oh great. oh, great. Nice to have you in the building. I'll see you in September. Right? <laughs> like, oh my God. So we opened September the 12th, uh, which is the day Jackie married Senator Kennedy. Of course, it's the day. Of course, there's a tie in there. Right. Of course. That's, what year was that? She married in 53. 53? Mm-hmm. Oh, that's pretty cool. 11 o'clock, St. Mary's Chapel. <laughs> Where's St. Mary's Newport. Chapel? Newport. Newport? Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Beautiful Dude, weather. Just, I, 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 did you answer what your obsession was or how, how you got there? No, I, I, well, I, I, I said, I, you know, you admire somebody that can stay the course, which she did. She never right. faltered. I mean, right. she always looked great. She always looked she great. spoke five languages, you know, uh, or four or five languages, knew how to poise, knew how to, I mean, think she saved the White House. The White House National Historical Society. It's because we her. So uh, our nation's treasures. Didn't are she get in some trouble treasure. though? Didn't she get in some trouble for like uh, for like the redesign <laughs> of it or something like that? She, what was that history? The blue room yeah. was not one of President Kennedy's favorite because she made it white with blue trim instead of all being blue, right? right. But it was still blue. And um, so they said we just don't have the money for this. That's how the guidebook came along. I mean, she was think about it. She got everything she wanted. You know, wearing triple strand of pearls and <laughs> yes, not raising her voice, she right? Did. She just was. But didn't Tom Cool collected? I, mm-hmm. Didn't didn't Mary um, Mary Lincoln? Didn't she get in some trouble for the same thing? Didn't she like try to redesign the White House? Well, no, I think Mary Todd Lincoln. What happened with her? She just was so far in debt when when she left. Well, the country her. was right. Yeah. I mean, because we were in the but, middle. I of I mean, Civil she War. was like poverty. I mean, she kept ordering these huge ball gowns from New York and torn, you know, all this crazy stuff. So it's an interesting story if you read the Mary Todd Lincoln story. It's pretty interesting. Her, you know, she, in the book, it alludes to she got uh, President Lincoln to marry because she said she was expecting. So imagine in the day. So, wow. you know, it's just interesting you yeah. read those fun facts. But anyway, with Jackie, I, I think her... Um, aloofness served her beautifully you know right but you've got to think she at three she won a blue ribbon riding horses so you step that back into where she is now she was poised i mean what do you she's do? dead now Monty. right no i'm some to today's standards oh <laughs> <laughs> news flash <laughs> been to arlington lately but anyway um you know what do you do when you show a horse you wear very tailored clothes not a lot of bling. Right. You set up straight. You don't talk. You stand. You walk. So she's groomed to do that. She's, and, right. you know, you couldn't write. You could Hallmark couldn't have written this story. You come in behind Mamie Eisenhower, the general's wife. And I don't know if you're familiar with military entertaining. It's just different, right? So here she comes in with the fresh hind to the White House. She's expecting She's young. She's beautiful. He's handsome. They're rich. They've got a little girl. She's expecting. She has a boy baby in the White House. First time we've had a child in the White House for years. I mean, you cannot write that story for right. Hallmark. So, you know, there you go. She spoke French, you know. <laughs> That's it then. Yeah, yeah done. 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 I've been trying bonjour. D- Dunsky. Yep. Dunsky. How was it like when you heard that she had passed? I sat up all night on that, and I was in the crowd at... Arlington Cemetery when they brought She's her body there. through. Yeah. Yeah. I still, to this day, run up at 1040 Fifth Avenue when I'm in New York. It's part of my run. And I run the reservoir. You know, there's a sign there, Jacqueline Kennedy Reservoir, because that's what she runs. So I run the reservoir every time I need. Oh, that's cool. I kneel and do a little prayer. <laughs> do you? Mm, people probably think I'm throwing <laughs> up. Because <I'm, laughs> getting to the reservoir wears me out. I'm, I'm all red. And, yeah, crazy. I'm not very fashionable when I'm running, but. Yeah. Hey, hey, we did a um, we did a uh, Instagram story, and we asked um, some of our listeners if they had questions for you. Oh, Can great. we take them? Can we take? Yeah, them? let's do it. Let's do let's it. Do I it. hope All they're right. good. All right, they, they are. They are good. And I, I want to introduce you to Gloria. Uh, Gloria is. Um, Gloria, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've known Gloria for years, but uh, she's mm-hmm. going to ask you the questions because she's got All them right. all written down right there in front of you. All right, Gloria, do a test mic. Okay, test. One, yeah, you're two, good, two. man. Yep. You're good. good. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Got yeah. It. She's got these. Snake print do you boots like on them? here. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do she's got her booties approve? on. Do you approve? I do yeah. saying yes to the boot. <laughs> yes to the boot. Oh, how many times have you said that in your life? A lot. <laughs> no. 
Yeah, under my breath more so than out openly. You know. Well, well you haven't been shy with us. I know, asshole. Well, and, and my <laughs> right, and my clients. The other day, this woman got up. She goes, "Oh my God, look! I I can't believe how good my hair looks. It's just amazing." I go, "Honey, it only had one way to go." <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So, mm-hmm. Oh, my gosh. All right, All right Gloria. So All right, Gloria. Was, what you got? Was, okay, so Jacqueline Kennedy was a style icon. Right. Is there anyone on the scene today whose style will endure as hers has? A Meghan Markle, probably, right off the bat. I think she carries it. Amazing and beautiful all during her pregnancies, which has got to be challenging for a woman, you know, in front of the cameras. But she literally just won that without an issue. And the simple jewelry, and um, I've got a photo on my phone I'll share with you that it really mimics exactly how Dr- Jackie was dressed in this same outfit, and she's dressed in the same outfit, down to the nude shoes. It's interesting. Oh. Yeah. All right, second one. Which celebrity slash public person would you like to restyle and why? Myself. Because <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm 60. Did I tell you that? I'm 66. That's Dude. old. Yeah, you, you've, been that old is for, you've been old for a while. I have been old for a while. Um, you know what? I, I there There's a, a couple I look at. Um, Sarah Jessica Parker, I would like to kind of work with her a little bit. Really? Because she's she, like, she's like known as like this, like style. I maiden know, but or you know, it, her vibe, I'm not quite sure where that is now. So if I had an opportunity, maybe her, um, and any of our, no offense to anybody in the industry, but any of our newscasters, I would gladly take a liking to help them out too as well. But anyway, yeah. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. Okay. What sets your salon apart? What have you learned from Say Yes to the Dress that helps your salon? All right, a couple things. Well, the first thing is I'm in it. (laughs) (laughs) That kind of sets it apart, a smidgen. And the one thing I have learned, and I tell everybody this all the time, just be prepared to expect the unexpected, and then you're safe. Just every day I go in there, you know, I'm just prepared. Like, when's a flood coming? Right. Yeah, or whatever. You know, because we have such talented staff members, there are very few redos. And unfortunately, the ones that have been redone are my own. So, um, <laughs> 8N. How can you right. redo 8N? Right, exactly. <laughs> right, right. How'd that go? A little red for you. It's all right. <laughs> a little hot on the roots. You're getting a new formula today. Yeah, right. Uh huh. That's awesome. Yep, that's uh, it for those questions. Okay, but cool. can I ask a yeah, question? Oh, sure. Okay. Yeah. okay, so do you take a second to sit back and look back at all of your successes and take it all in? You know what? I am very fortunate, and I wake up every morning, hopefully, right? right. When <laughs> and, you do. Yep, yeah, when I do, and I always say my morning prayers. So it's kind of my reflection time and how blessed. And, you know, I've never put myself above anybody else. I think we're all equal. I just, I believe that. I live that. Uh, you know, I do my own laundry. <laughs> you know, I wash and clean my own car. I drive my own car, right? right. Uh, yeah, I I live a pretty modest life when you think about it. But, uh, yeah, I don't ask anything of others that I wouldn't do myself. I mean, uh, the Reverend... From my church, which is right up the street. Um, anyway, they were walking by, and the his wife Barbara Oren's wife said to me, "Monty is so funny because two of our parishioners came by your salon, and they said, do you know he was out there cleaning the windows on a ladder?'" And she goes, "Oh yeah, she he takes out the trash and sweeps the floors too if you're doing it." But if if my team has had a busy day and I've had to leave early or whatever, I come back at night. I do the laundry. I make sure the everything's filled up. So when they come in the next morning, they're set and ready to go. So, you know, failure to prepare is preparing to fail. Certainly. And a friend of mine uh, put that. Her brother says it all the time. And it's true. It's so true. So, um, you know, we're small. We're I'm a little bit of a clean freak. So I want everything pristine. The pillows have to be in a certain position. The chairs have to be turned to per- a certain position at He says night. clean freak. I think that's OCD, Monty. Mm. Okay, mm. maybe. You I might need can. a prescription for that. 
But if you're in the salon, it, I mean, it's beautiful. It oh, is it's just so like, well put thank together. You. And, thank you. Appreciate and it. And Corey and I are going to come and hang out on our day off to just <laughs> bring it back down a notch Yo, a little come, bit. Yeah, um, come on a Tuesday. <laughs> <Monty's> <laughs> <day off. laughs> all right, all right we'll be back hope tomorrow. Y'all catch, y'all, hope, y'all, hope y'all didn't catch that. Oh anyway, my god, that's no. awesome. That's it so is funny. funny, right? It's so funny. And you think about it, even for yourselves. I mean, you think about going to hair school. It was kind of like, am I really going to make this work for me or not? Because, like you said, you hear the stats. Sure. Yeah. Well, turn around, look in the room. Half of you won't even be graduating. I'm like, what is that to say to us when we just know, get right? in, right? Exactly. But, um, yeah, I mean, yourselves, aren't you surprised you're still in it? Yeah. I mean, I mean the industry, really? The industry right? has been so, so generous to me. And so, right. and yeah. yeah. Likewise. I'm so blessed. Yeah, yeah. I feel the same way. Yeah. yeah there, there's, great. there's no doubt. And then, um, to that point, and then, and then when we started the podcast and like just how like open and accepting the industry's mm-hmm. been, um, to, 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 you know, yeah, I'm honored y'all even bothered to ask me to oh, come stop. on. I mean, that's seriously. Crazy. I mean, that's I mean we've been a fan since, since my school, camp. brother. Yeah, right, yeah. right. <laughs> Wish I could say same. But anyway. <laughs> um, I feel like that kid <laughs> hiding in the enclave at the water fountain. I know, right? right? You know, <laughs> feel bullied now. Okay? Right. Come right. on, man. Exactly, right. Come on, man. Show you some love, right? <laughs> Show you some love. But, um, no, it is amazing. I mean, for me to walk down the street and people call out my name. I mean, you know, it, it it's heartwarming. You know, hey, Monty. You know, yeah. I'll be running and people will call out my name. I'm like, all right. So it's uh, it's pretty amazing. Does your makeup Plus. run when you run? You know what? Remember, I don't wear anything. Uh-huh. That's why my skin looks like this, I think. In quotes, I don't wear anything. You do have nice skin. Mm-hmm. Genetics, right? Right. Good products. Um. Yeah. I'm. But I'm. I'm a bit of a skin whore. <laughs> I mean, it, 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 right. I've been doing this since I was what, seventeen. Right. Facials. If you see the facial Fridays, right? Right. Yeah. 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 And Tweezer Tuesdays. I do those, but I only have so much tweez, and we won't go there. But um. Yeah. <laughs> so we switched it off to Task Tuesdays. So every Tuesday, I list a task like cleaning out my refrigerator. And I show oh, myself smart. cleaning up fridge, right? Yeah. yeah. Polishing the silver, you know, cleaning the windows. And I'm doing it. So I'm, I'm telling it. So it's Task Tuesday. That's pretty Facial cool. Friday. Facial Friday flips between Facial Friday and a Fashion Friday, depending nice. on what I'm wearing. Depending, get it. Mm-hmm. Get it. Or you could just facial and fashion. Yeah. Uh, I, I've tried that. It doesn't work. Well, I had a dress shirt on with French cuffs. I had a facial on. And the feedback was, is that how you do your facial? I'm like, <laughs> actually, I was under the gun. I had to get this done. <laughs> and I was like, just slap this on. Got a time. Yeah, I'm going to rinse this off. I got to get to work. <laughs> no but, time yeah. Friday. Is right, exactly. <laughs> right. That's the big thing um, is how quick the days go, right? How fortunate are we to be in the industry? <sighs> but when you lose that two-hour block, you have those morning appointments, and then from like 11 to 1, cancellations and you have oh, to yeah. sit there i mean it's like, just rah. right i got so much so i clean so much i can do that's of when course. we come in and fill in okay there great you let's do it i'm gonna come in and get a facial monty we apply it mm-hmm. <laughs> hey monty Maybe. if uh if uh if people want to follow you see you whatever how, how can they well, how, can, how can they jump in, in into your world how can they watch the facial fridays yeah, or fashion okay fridays? so instagram is probably the best part and it's the real monty durham so, you know, we wanted to make sure they knew it was And that's D-U-R-H-A-M. Really, yes. Uh, and then uh, anytime you can reach out to salonmonty.com, go on the webpage, you'll see uh, things we're posting, looks we're doing, some of them better than others. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so, yeah, a lot of activity, you know. And I try to keep it somewhat simple, right, uh, <laughs> but... Because of my outreach program, you know, we talked about that a little bit. I'm a hospice trained, so I do fundraiser USO. Uh, I've just signed up with um, saving our green spaces, you know, cause in poaching on all the green spaces. So River Farm was under uh, my radar for a while, so we were working on that. Um, yeah, animal rescue. Of course, I do volunteer work through my church stuff as well. So, uh, yeah, a, a little busy. And we're fortunate because we're in the new part of Old Town, if that makes sense. So whenever there's a tour given by the Alexandria Chamber of Commerce or somebody, uh, 
they kick it off in our salon. So it's always great. We're, we're well, always, cool. yeah, we're always happy to see visitors and share with it. And so if people are in Alexandria, they can just stop by. Just and say stop hello. in, you know, yeah, come on in. Hold the ladder for Monty you, as he's cleaning the windows. <laughs> right. Do probably. you talk about all this and will they be able to find out about the new show when that if happens, happens on, on in January? The, on, yeah. On yeah. We'll Instagram. post it on Instagram. I mean, as y'all know, in, in the media world, it, it, there's a lot of hands on and eyes on these things. So we haven't gotten to contracts. We haven't talked money. We haven't talked time. So we will probably narrow that all down when we meet in January. We'll have a better feel for it. And then the paperwork starts, right, <laughs> you know, back and forth. Happens. The attorneys get involved. I mean, I never knew I needed so many attorneys. I mean, what, <laughs> right. what, what is that about? What are we doing? Yeah, I had an agent. I just did not like that at all. So no more. So I do my own. People reach out to me on the media. And, I, you know, it's better because you reach out to me. I'm going to tell you right away, do I have time to do it? And do I want to do it? Because mm-hmm. right. there's some things I just, I appreciate the offer. And I always tilt back to West Virginia. Um the issue with a lot of the events is I'm, I'm not given enough notice, so I can't shift my schedule as, as rapidly as I once was able to now with the salon. So um, if anybody's interested and have me do something, <laughs> please let me know. But let me know in advance. I, I get all these things at the last minute, and, you know, and you hate to turn it down because, you know, you want to be out there. Well, we're do- yeah. well, we're hosting a hair show in Maryland at the end of March, and we'd love okay, to yeah, stop let by me, and say hello. Yeah, let me put that on a calendar. Let's do it. Yeah, yeah. Where am I? I've got March. I've got a speaking engagement, but yeah. All right. We'll chat about that off. Yeah, there. yeah, no. Monty, text me. Honestly, dude, and, and uh, this is a great segue. Just thank you for giving us your time, and thank oh, you for wanting to do pleasure. it and not like sliding us in. Well, I um, really didn't want to. <laughs> See, well, you know, <laughs> thank you, Sharon, for, yeah, uh, for, thanks, for, Sharon. for, for, for holding him no, prisoner oh my for God, us. Long right. Enough. But it's great reminiscing and seeing oh you guys so successful and doing and doing what Same. you love. You you literally are glowing and growing. Um, <laughs> but um, no, I mean, y'all look great. And it shows yeah. you're doing what you're doing. Well, you and make, you set your this makeup up so artist great. is awesome. And, right? Um, no, setup and efficiency, you know, that that's a big part of pulling all this together. So well, we appreciate yeah, well it. done. Well done. Continue to sex I mean success. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you you, you sex. couldn't even get that out. You I know. Get it out. Uh, right. <laughs> Continued success to all of us, right? In this <laughs> industry and others. I mean, Absolutely. it's challenging now. Yeah, yeah. Challenging no times. But as I say, always you know, stay healthy, stay fun. And, well, it applies to most people. Stay fashionable. <laughs> <laughs> For the rest of the world. <laughs> Mr. Monty Durham, thank you very, very much. My pleasure. So Great chatting, guys. Your day off. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, share it with friends. Give us a rating and drop a review. To listen to all the latest podcasts, please subscribe from your favorite podcast outlet. And to stay connected on and off the show, you can follow us at Hairdistry on Instagram and all other social media platforms. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time. Peace and love.